Well, I truly am excited for you because I believe that for many of you, the hearing of this lesson is going to be a milestone in your walk with the Lord in the call that God has placed on your life. And that's because I'm teaching today on how to discover your spiritual gifts. I'm not just talking about the spiritual gifts. I'm telling you how to discover your gifts. Now, here's the really good news. It's very simple and it's very practical. I'm going to give you three very simple biblical truths that you can begin to apply to your life immediately. And I mean that as soon as you turn off this video, you're gonna to begin to apply these truths and you'll start to sense what I call the purposeful pull on your life. And that purposeful pull, the hand of God, linked with the passion that he's placed inside of you, is what draws you to the fulfillment of the destiny that God has placed on your life, to the fulfillment of the call that he has placed on your life. Now, even if you know what your spiritual gifts are, this is for you too, because these truths can really help other people. And if you learn how to present this practically and simply, then you'll be able to teach others how to discover their spiritual gifts. Now, this is the final part in my series, The Gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I pray today that it blesses you, that it encourages you, and that it equips you to discover your spiritual gifts. Now, of course, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me as usual. He's going to lead you in worship, and then we're going to get right into this. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. And our God, a firm foundation, our rock, the only solid ground, as nations rise and fall. Kingdoms once strong, now shaken, we trust forever in your name, the name of Jesus. We trust the name of Jesus, for you are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. And unmasked in all your wisdom, in love and justice you will reign and every knee will bow we bring our expectation our hope is anchored in your name the name of jesus for we trust the name Jesus, for you are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever. Victorious, you are the only king forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only king forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You're victorious, God. Yeah. Now, on a side note, I had mentioned to you in, I believe, part two of my series, it could have been part two or three, that I was going to go over the service gifts, which was a category that I did not address. I talked to you about the power gifts. I talked to you about the leadership gifts. That was two of the lessons of the four-part series. And in part one, I gave you an introduction on the spiritual gifts and gave you just some foundational truths that you should apply to your understanding before you begin to activate the spiritual gifts in your life. Now, I did want to go over the service gifts because I promised you I would, but please know that just because I'm not devoting an entire lesson to these gifts in particular, this category of gifts, that doesn't mean that these gifts are not as important as the power gifts or the leadership gifts. They're just 
simpler to explain. They're easier to explain. And because of that, I don't need to devote a whole lesson to them. Now, I'm going to read this list. And as I'm reading it, you're going to say, well, that doesn't sound too spiritual or that doesn't sound supernatural. But the truth is, when it comes to the service gifts, it's not necessarily about the application of the gift, but the source of the gift. So, for example, the first gift I'm going to list on the service gifts is Roman, found in Romans chapter 12, verse 8, and that is the gift of exhortation. Now, the gift of exhortation is the ability to encourage someone or to uplift someone with your words. Now, that gift in and of itself is a spiritual gift because of the source. Of course, you can encourage someone without the Holy Spirit. People in the world do it all of the time. But the gift of exhortation is a Holy Spirit-empowered ability to encourage someone. So it has a supernatural touch on it in that it is sourced by the Holy Spirit and it is graced by the Holy Spirit. There's something divine about it. And so those who encourage just in the flesh or those who encourage just out of their own free will are encouragers, but that encouragement doesn't go as deep as the one who encourages with the gift of exhortation empowered by the Holy Spirit. And so the same type of reasoning applies to all of the gifts I'm about to list. So the gift of exhortation, the gift of encouragement, that ability to encourage someone, though it may not look supernatural in its application, it is supernatural in its source. And again, this applies to all that we're about to read. So the gift of exhortation is the ability to encourage someone with supernatural ability. The gift of giving. This is the gift of generosity that God has placed on an individual to give to the gospel, to give to the church, to give to those in need. That is a spiritual gift. And again, although it doesn't have the supernatural application, it is still just as important as any other gift that God has given to the church, possibly even more so. That selflessness is so reflective of Christ. In fact, all of these gifts of service are so reflective of Christ. I happen to believe that they might even be more important than the other gifts in their application. So then we have the gift of leadership, which is Romans chapter 12, verse 8. And by the way, the gift of giving is also found in Romans chapter 12, verse 8. And the gift of leadership is in Romans 12, 8 and 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Then there is the gift of prophecy. Now, I put the gift of prophecy in the service gifts because I believe it is a form of serving someone. But again, whether you categorize it under the power gifts or service gifts is not important. It's just important that you understand the gift of prophecy, which I already addressed in the previous lesson. Then there is the gift of service. This is just a servant's heart. This is the ability to serve, just practical day-to-day -day operations. You know, in the book of Exodus, the Holy Spirit empowered certain men to design the ephod and certain things that went into the tabernacle. So even though they were practical in application, the actions that those men took were spiritual in their source. So the Holy Spirit will empower you to do practical things all of the time. And because those things are done with excellence, they are reflective of the culture of heaven, for heaven is excellent. Now, there is also the gift of administration and helps. And by the way, the, service, the gift of service is found in Romans chapter 12, verse 7. The gift of administration and helps. This is the gift of an organization or administration, as it says. So this is the Holy Spirit ability to organize, to administrate, to operate, to see the bigger picture. I know all of these gifts are in operation in our ministry. I have someone in our finance department. I have someone who oversees administrative and financial uh, details of the ministry. And he is so incredibly gifted at the gift of administration that the ministry has grown because of his contributions of his gift. And so that gift of administration, though this is a healing ministry, or I like to call it an evangelistic healing ministry, the fact that he's able to organize everything the way he does keeps the ministry flowing with, with excellence and with great execution. So, for example, those of you who have partnered with the ministry, you'll notice you've received your book, your product, within a timely manner. And you notice you got an email and a call and you notice you, you, you got the book signed and the packaging it came in was very nice. And that is because we have someone who is gifted in the gift of administration. And so I can go on listing people all throughout our ministry. There are people who have the gift of giving. Our partners have the gift of giving. Not only do they give to their local churches their tithes and offerings, but above and beyond their tithes and offerings, they also give to other ministries like ours. And so they have the gift of giving in action. Many of you who comment here all the time, Sometimes I will get to read the comments because 
Tim will send them to me and I get to read them. And often those comments are very encouraging. And sometimes I'll read a comment and it'll just spark something in me. I'll feel encouraged. That's because many of you have the gift of encouragement and so forth. I can go on listing all of these different gifts, the gift of leadership, it's the Holy Spirit ability to lead and on and on. So those are the service gifts, exhortation, giving, leadership. I put prophecy in there, but you don't have to. Uh, service and administration, or also known as helps. Now, before I get into the meat of the lesson on how exactly to discover your spiritual gifts, there are a few things I want to go over concerning the spiritual gifts that I didn't necessarily have the time to do in the previous three lessons. So first of all, I want to just give you a quick breakdown of facts about the gifts. So number one, the gifts can work together. That's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where you see Paul giving the analogy of a body. And let's actually go there and, and read just a small portion of it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 22. Take a look at this. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. And those, I believe, are the service gifts. And the parts that we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen. Well, the more honorable parts do not require this special care. So God has put the body together such that extra honor and care are given to those parts that have less dignity. This makes for harmony among the members so that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. All of you together are Christ's body and each of you is a part of it. So the scripture makes it clear that the gifts work together. I'll give you an example. I have a friend who's very anointed in the prophetic, and there were a couple of services that we ministered together. In fact, there was a season where we were going together and ministering as a pair. And he was so anointed in the prophetic that he was able to find things in people's hearts that I would have never seen. So for example, this woman came up, she was praying for deliverance and healing. And so I'm praying for her to receive her healing. I'm laying hands on her, and there was something blocking that healing. There was an obstacle there. By the way, I've taught on this before, obstacles to healing. And, and this was blocking her healing, and I could not figure out how to minister to this woman. I did not know what was going on. And the prophet of God standing right next to me looks right in at her, and I, I promise you, it's almost as if he looked right through her. And he says to her, I see that you're carrying in you bitterness and unforgiveness because you're living under the hand of an abusive man who threatens to divorce you, he's cheating on you, and he beats you often. He just said it real bluntly like that. He's that specific with his prophetic words. And this woman broke down weeping. And the moment she let that unforgiveness go, and of course we also directed her to get some help in that area, but the moment she let that go, the healing manifested in her body. Because the prophet used his gift of prophecy to find what was blocking the healing, and I used the gift of healing. And, it, and when I say I use the gift of healing, I don't necessarily believe I have the gift of healing. I like to more so say that I just tell people about the healer. But this is just an example of how the gifts can work together. And I ministered healing to her. And so those gifts paired together to touch that woman. And it was powerful. So the gifts can work together. And then the gifts can be requested. Some of you feel guilty about asking for things. But 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1, the scripture says, let love be your highest goal, but you should also desire the special abilities the Spirit gives, especially the ability to prophesy. Now, some may say, well, it doesn't say you should ask for them. It says you should desire them. But if you're desiring them, it means that you don't have them. And if you desire something that you don't have, you're going to ask for it, especially if it's a spiritual gift. So the gifts can be requested. Don't feel guilty for asking for a gift. Don't feel bad that you want a spiritual gift. Many people I talk to, they don't want to ask the Lord for a spiritual gift or they don't want to believe that they have a spiritual gift because they're afraid that their motives might be impure or they're afraid that it may come across as bragging. On the other extreme, some people are very self-promoting, but we know we try to avoid both extremes here. Don't reject a gift that God wants to give to you just because you're afraid of how you might be perceived for asking for that gift or for desiring that gift. So if you desire a gift, it's not a, it's not a bad thing. It's not wrong to ask the Lord. Ask Him for the gift of prophecy. Ask Him for the gift of healing. He'll either say yes or no. 
And so God gives us these gifts when we ask. Now, here's what's so important to remember. And I just mentioned this just a little while ago, but I want to just emphasize this. Some of you don't ask for spiritual gifts because you're afraid God might judge your motives as being impure. I know I just said that, but I really felt the Holy Spirit pressing on my heart to emphasize that because that's, this is going to set somebody free. You want to ask for a gift, but in your heart you're saying, no, no, I shouldn't. That's wrong. That's not wrong. There's no scripture that says that's wrong. Instead, it says to earnestly desire the spiritual gifts. That means to, to long for it, to want it with all your being. It is not wrong to desire a spiritual gift so long as Jesus remains your focus. So, number one, the gifts can work together. Number two, the gifts can be requested. Number three, the gifts can be imparted. Now, this is powerful. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 says, This is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. So the spiritual gifts can be imparted through the laying on of hands from someone who is a spiritual mentor or a brother or sister in Christ. The spiritual gifts can be imparted. That's powerful. To know that the portion that God has placed upon your life of the anointing can be transferred through impartation is a powerful truth. Now, this doesn't mean that you go laying hands on everybody, tell them, you got the gift, you got the gift, you got the gift, but you have to be spiritually led to do these things. But the spiritual gifts can be imparted to the laying on of hands. Number four, with the same verse, the gifts can be stirred. I want to read that verse again. This is why I remind you to fan into flames or stir up the gifts, the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. You can stir it up. So when it's imparted, it's deposited. When it's stirred, it's activated. And then my fifth point, the gifts can be strengthened, which is found in Romans chapter 12, verse number six. And when I talk about the gift being strengthened, that's different than it being stirred. Because whereas the gift being stirred is the gift being activated, the gift being strengthened is the gift being calibrated. So that's going to be found in Romans chapter 12, verse number six, where the scripture says, In His grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. In other words, as your faith grows, as your spirit grows, so also your gifts will grow. Now, an example of this is actually found concerning the gift of discernment in Hebrews chapter 5, verse number 14. Now, this context is not specifically talking about the gift of discernment, but it is talking about spiritual discernment and how that spiritual discernment can be strengthened. So Hebrews chapter 5, verse number 14 says, Solid food is for those who are mature who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong or discern between good and evil. So through training, that discernment is strengthened. Through training, that discernment is sharpened. And so if spiritual discernment can be sharpened, surely the gift of discernment can be sharpened. If your faith can grow, then surely the capacity for your gifts can grow. For faith directly affects your gift. So if you can prophesy in proportion to your faith, then all of the other gifts must operate the same. They are all operated by the Spirit, and so they grow alongside your faith. And if your faith can grow, so can your spiritual gifts grow. So the gifts can work together. The gifts can be requested. The gifts can be imparted. That's when they're deposited. The gifts can be stirred. That's when they're activated. And the gifts can be strengthened. That's when they're calibrated. Now, I got a couple questions that I want to answer, and then I'm actually one more, and then I'm going to get into how you can discover your gift. So stick around for that. You're going to want to hear it, and I promise you it's going to bless you. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 29 through 31, the scripture says this. Are we all apostles? Are we all prophets? Are we all teachers? Do we all have the power to do miracles? Do we all have the gift of healing? Do we all have the ability to speak in unknown languages or to speak in tongues? Do we all have the ability to interpret unknown languages or interpret tongues? Of course not. So you should earnestly desire the most helpful gifts. But now let me show you a way of life that is best of all. Now, what's interesting here 
I'm going to just show you one example of what I want you to grasp here. Paul the Apostle just instructed the Corinthians, and he's telling them that not all believers have these certain gifts. He said not all, not all believers will speak in new languages or speak in tongues, and not all believers will have the gift of healing. However, the book of Mark, chapter 16, beginning at verse number 15, says this, And he told them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Now hold on there. That's Ephesians chapter 4, 11, the evangelist. Are we all evangelists? No, but we're all to evangelize. Verse 16, anyone who believes in me and is baptized will be saved, but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. Who? Those who believe. Believe what? The words that the disciples preach, the gospel. Those who believe the gospel, these signs will follow them. It doesn't say, these signs will follow special, specially gifted people. These signs will follow certain apostles. These signs will follow certain believers up to a certain period of time. He just says these miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. And again, in context, it's talking about the gospel. They will cast out demons in my name, and they will speak in new languages or speak in tongues, as the King James Version puts it. They will be able to handle snakes with safety, and if they drink anything poisonous, it will not hurt them. Now, they will be able to handle snakes. It's not talking about literal snakes because we know Jesus referenced snakes and the Pharisees referenced snakes. They're talking about demonic powers. It won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. That has nothing to do with the gift of healing. That has to do with the activity of the everyday believer. Yet in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 29 through 31, Paul the apostle rhetorically asks, do all have gifts of healing? He says, of course not. So this must mean that just like the office of the prophet and the gift of prophecy are different from one another, so the activity of a certain power in the believer's life is different than the gift. These gifts listed in 1 Corinthians 12 are mentioned in the context of public use. Now, in 1 Corinthians 14, Paul the Apostle lays down some groundwork for understanding how the public gift of tongues is to operate. And if you'll recall, I touched on the gift of tongues and I talked to you about the various different expressions of the gift of tongues. And so he's limiting one type of expression, not all types of expression. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you got to go and watch the ser this series. So this question is kind of digging a little bit deeper. Now, you just saw that not all have gifts of healing, but every believer is going to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. So again, the function is different from the gift. Now, this is also something that will help us understand this gift in, in, in more detail, or this, this uh, teaching in more detail. Paul the Apostle is saying, do all have these gifts? No. But then he goes on to say in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 39, So my dear brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy. That's a command. And he's telling brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy and don't forbid speaking in tongues. So, the gifts that we function in are to be used and the functions that are gifts are to be used. So you have to understand there's a difference between gifts and functions. The gifts are the public ministry emphasis and the functions are something that's a part of the believer's everyday life. Now, I'm going to show you another thing. He asked, do all speak in tongues? Well, who's supposed to pray in tongues? Does the Bible tell us? Makes it perfectly clear. In Acts chapter 2, verse number 33 where the scripture says, actually, let's start at verse 32 for the sake of context. God raised Jesus from the dead, and we are all witnesses of this. Now he is exalted to the place of the highest honor in heaven at God's right hand. And the Father, as he had promised, gave him the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us, just as you see and hear today. Now, who was this promise for? This was for everyone. This was for the generations. Go and read Acts chapter 2, and for the sake of time, I'm not going to read it because I want to get into the meat of how to discover your spiritual gifts, but go and read Acts chapter 2, and you'll see that Peter is talking about a promise made to all who believe, a promise made to every one who will give their life to Christ, that they would receive the Holy Spirit. And how does he describe this promise? 
as something you see and hear. What were they seeing and what were they hearing? They were seeing the tongues of fire and they were hearing people pray in tongues. So the gift of tongues is for every believer. Now, this doesn't mean that if you don't pray in tongues, you're not a Christian. I don't, I don't adhere to that form of um, extremism or fanaticism. But I do believe that the gift of tongues is available to all believers. And so, again, we have to understand that though not all of the public ministry functions are for every believer, the gift of speaking in tongues is for all believers. The ability to heal the sick is for all believers. The ability to drive out demons is for all believers. Prophesying, Paul the Apostle, 1 Corinthians 14, 39, desire to prophesy. You see, I believe the Holy Spirit moves more diversely through every believer than we'd like to believe. And so that is my thought on that. Can every believer speak in tongues? And I think in answering, can every believer speak in tongues? I'm also addressing at the same time all of the other gifts of the Holy Spirit with the same type of reasoning. Now, how can you tell if you have the gift? I'm going to give it to you three simple keys. Number one, actually, let me put it to you this. I'm going to ask you three simple questions, okay? Number one, do you desire the gift? I'll rephrase it. What gift do you desire? Think about that, okay? Number two, do others see the gift in you without you having to promote it? That's recognition. Number three is function. Do you operate in that gift? Now, if you answered yes to just one of these concerning any of the gifts, I believe that's your gift. Why would you desire a spiritual gift? Do you think that the devil put a desire for a spiritual gift in you? Do you think your flesh desires anything spiritual? So if you have a spiritual desire for a spiritual gift, who's the one that put it there? That's right, it was the Lord. I believe your purpose is always linked with your passion. In other words, God's, God puts passions inside of you because he understands how he wants you to function. And when he puts those passions inside of you, that passion pulls you toward the gift that he has placed upon you. So number one, desire. And this is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. We just read, Let love be your highest goal, but you should also desire the special abilities the Spirit gives. That desire that is in your heart for a spiritual gift I believe was placed there by the Lord. Do you desire the gift of healing? I believe God wants you to have that gift. Do you desire the gift of prophecy? I believe God wants you to have that gift. Who else wants you to have it? It's not your flesh. Your flesh desires nothing spiritual. The devil doesn't want you functioning in a gift. It would just destroy his kingdom. So desire is one way to know you have a spiritual gift. What gift do you desire? And see, this is so exciting. As I'm talking about this, there's some, I just felt it even right now. There's something stirring up inside of you right now. As you're thinking about the gifts you desire and realizing that God put those desires in you, it's like a spark of life coming up inside of you. Number two, recognition. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 16 says, A man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. Do others see that gift in you? Now, that may not happen right away. I think the greatest indication... Let me just say this before I continue to talk about recognition. I think the greatest indication that you have the gift is the desire to have it. But recognition is also a good way to know if you have that gift. Because others will see it. The gift will reveal itself. Others will, you don't have to push it. The gift will make room for you. Number three is function. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 says, There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. In other words, He sourced you with it so you can function in it. So can you function in it? Have you prayed for the sick? Have you prophesied? Have you received discernment regarding anything? And if not, start stepping out in faith. How will you know if you have the gift of healing if you never pray for the sick? And how will you know if you can prophesy if you never open your mouth? And how will you know if you have the gift of teaching if you never try to understand the word? And how will you know if you're a, if you're a pastor if you never step out into the call of God? How will you know you're gifted as an evangelist if you never tell anyone about Jesus? You have got to act. It's time to stop sitting around and standing around and say, Lord, show me my gift. I want to know my gift. If there's a desire in you for a certain gift, go and see if that gift is there. I challenge you. I dare you. Go and see if that gift is there. So number one is desire. Number two is recognition. And number three is function. And that's how you know if you have a spiritual gift. And that's it for this lesson. And that's it for this series. 
on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I want to pray with you now. I want to pray that that gift be stirred up within you, like Paul told to Timothy, stir up the gift of God within you. Come on, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray. Come on, stretch your hands toward mine. I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit right now. I pray for that one watching right now, Lord, that one receiving this prayer. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would begin to impart and to stir, activate that which is dormant. Stir that gift, Lord. And I pray in the name of Jesus that from this day forward, that one receiving this prayer would begin to step out in faith. Use them in proportion to their faith, Lord. And as their faith grows, let their gifts grow. Lord, sharpen the spiritual senses. Stir the hunger, stir the desire, stir the faith. And anoint them to boldly step out and activate the spiritual gifts that you've given to them. I pray, Lord, this in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for the impartation that's taking place to some through this ministry. I thank you, Father, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, fill us afresh. Let us become your vessels, Lord. Strategically place us where we belong. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to say it. If you agree, say amen. Wow. I really enjoyed teaching that series. And I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. There are your names. We love you, we are praying for you, and I thank you for joining the Spirit family. If you'd like information on how you can join Spirit Church, then go ahead and go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch, and you can sign up for free. As a member of Spirit Church, you're going to get a free weekly email from me. It's going to be a lesson on Sunday mornings that you get. Usually, I mean, most of them are brand new. Every once in a while, we have to send something archived, say my travel schedule doesn't allow for it or whatnot, but... You're going to get a brand new teaching from me, generally speaking, every single week. And I know it will bless your life. Also, you'll be able to reply to that email for spiritual support, such as prayer or counsel. And we'll be there to counsel you in the Word and pray for you regarding your needs. And so, if you'd like to join the Spirit family, there are over 2,000 members now from all around the world. You can go ahead to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch, 100% free. I want to get to your comments now from last week's video. And this was on the teaching, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the power gifts. So this first comment is from Giovanni Gordon. Thank you for this amazing teaching, Pastor David. I believe that I have the gift of prophecy and wisdom. I've also been praying to receive the gift of healing, faith, tongues, and tongues interpretation. Well, Giovanni, I pray the Lord would give you the desire of your heart. And I asked the viewers last week what they thought their spiritual gifts were. And so that's why you may see some of them listing them here. Miriam Carlos writes, I believe that God gave me the gift of healing. I used to watch healing services and I consistently felt this strong calling and urge in my heart to do the same thing. This ministry was used by the Lord to stir my faith and confirm my calling. God bless you, Brother David. Well, God bless you, Miriam. You know, I felt the same way about watching documentaries on healing evangelists. I would watch oh, things on Catherine Coleman, Oral Roberts, Pastor Benny Hinn, all the wonderful servants of the Lord who we love and appreciate. And I'm telling you, there's this pull toward the call of God. You, you're drawn to like-minded people. Idenria writes, Hello, Brother David. I'm so blessed for all your teachings. They are a great help to me. I received the gift of tongues after watching one of your teachings. I declare blessings upon blessings for you and your ministry. Thank you so much. God bless. And God bless you too. Christy Mullen writes, Brother David, I just want to send some encouragement your way. These teachings have blessed me a lot. Glory to God. Well, Christy, you may have the gift of encouragement because you're, you were compelled to do so. That might be the spiritual gift. Moa Sor writes, Hello, Pastor David. I'm being blessed through your teaching, and I'm looking forward to the next one. God gave me the gift of tongues, and I wish God would use me to give miracles as well. I'm so blessed. May God bless you and your ministry. Thank you. Well, after you just learned from this lesson, that may be a spiritual gift. And the final commenter writes, Thank you so much, Brother David. My desire is to receive the gift of speaking in tongues and prophecy. Thank you for your ministry. I feel blessed every time I watch your videos. And this is Leta from South Africa. Well, God bless you. We love you all the way there in South Africa. And I'm saying hello from Southern California. 
Well, that's it for the comments. Let me know in the comment section here, just talk to you about the lesson. Even if you want to throw in some questions, I'd be happy to take some questions during the comments. And I think that's going to be something we start doing now. Send me some questions if you have them, anything, whether the topic we discussed or not, and keep it short, keep it simple, and I, I'll get to the, the questions if you have, um, I, I want to see, what, what do I want to know from you on this edition? Why don't you go ahead and let me know what gift you desire? and put that on the comment section. That'll be a good one. Let me know what gift you desire from the Lord. Well, I want to talk to you now. You know, we're so close to our goal. This is exciting. Take a look at where we are. This, what you're looking at right here right now, is our progress concerning our ministry campaign. Now, as you can see, we tried to reach 1,000 brand new $30 a month supporters because we need monthly support to be able to step into the next phase of ministry. Now, that graphic you saw showed you how close we are to our goal. Now that monthly support is going to cover two very important, I should say, departments of ministry. Number one, it's going to help us enter and operate our brand new television production studio. I'm gonna call it the World Evangelism Center or A World Evangelism Center is what we're gonna to refer to it as. Maybe not the title in the building, but that's kind of giving you an idea of what it is. And this center is going to be the home of the brand new TV network, the Encounter TV network, which is gonna focus on the new media outlets of television. It's going to be the home of our brand new studio. We're also gonna bring other ministries in. It's gonna be where we're able to broadcast live. Imagine being able to broadcast live from this set to you. There are some limitations with the building we're at now as far as live broadcasting goes, especially as it goes with the internet. So we need to change locations so we can start doing that. Also, we're gonna be able to accommodate a studio audience right there live in studio here in Southern California. And this means that you can come in. In fact, my goal is to hold weekly meetings in this new facility on maybe Tuesday nights we'll do them. And I think we're going to call them Impartation Live. It's going to be a whole new, whole new stream of ministry that we're doing. And also, we're going to have a 24-7 prayer room in that production studio. So this production studio is going to be the home to our offices, our production facility. Bottom line, that facility is going to help us to reach more people in more ways, through more media, and it's going to be powerful. The second stream, that's just the first, the second stream is that we're going to be able to do more events more often in more places. So I want to say yes to all the countries that are inviting us. But in order to do that, we need to get to the next phase of monthly support. Now, I stress monthly support. There is a difference between a one-time gift and a monthly gift. A one-time gift is appreciated, it's helpful, and we really need those too. But the monthly gift enables us to plan our ministry operations with wisdom and excellence and do things consistently. And so we need your help. We need you to sign up to become a monthly supporter so that we can win more souls than ever before. Listen, this ministry is growing. There are big things coming our way, and I want you to be a part of them. There, I, 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 I'm telling you, the Lord has been putting inside of me vision for big, big, big things. You serve a big God. It's time to believe big. So sign up today. Help me win souls. Look, there are many things I could tell you. I could tell you God will bless you. I could tell you you'll receive an impartation for the ministry, as some others might tell you. But honestly, I know we don't give to receive. We give so that the gospel can go forward. And so I'm going to tell you this. You partner with me and you're helping me win more souls. Look, you've, you've watched this several times. You've seen me do this often. And you said, maybe I'll do it uh, when I get paid. Maybe I'll do it when I get a better job. Maybe I'll do it when I get to a different place. Listen, step out in faith. Partner with our ministry today. And as a gift, an initiation gift, I'll send you either Carriers of the Glory or 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare. I'll sign it personally and I'll send it to you as my thank you for signing up to become a partner. And then stay with us for the long haul. So this is the first phase, okay? This is the monthly cost. With this new facility, there's gonna be monthly cost and one-time renovation cost. One-time renovation, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I know we can meet that rather quickly. So I'm really focusing on the monthly cost, which is gonna take care of rent the lease or, or however we decide to do that. It's going to take care of the maintenance. They take care of the insurance. It's going to take care of the janitorial. It's going to take care of everything that we that comes with running a new facility. So help us do that today. Sign up right now. If you are watching this on YouTube, then at the end of this video, you're going to see a link up here. You can click that link and you can sign up right away. Don't leave until this video ends. If you're watching this everywhere else, use the information at the bottom of the screen to partner with our ministry. Do it today. Help me win more souls. 
Stop saying, Lord, maybe this, maybe that. We keep, here's what we say. We say, Lord, bless me and I'll give. God says, give and I will bless you. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.